<laughs> yeah, every every uh, every uh, war had that, right? I mean, Napoleon. I think even coming out of uh, even when he marched out of Moscow, he had the camp followers. For John, for example, he he has never been able to pass a bookstore anymore. Certain people, whenever she feels to pass a bar, and uh, as a result, just among other things, he has photographs and autographs of every member of Lincoln's cabinet. Oh my goodness. Hey, how you doing, John? From Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. He is probably toured the battlefield to Gettysburg five times. <laughs> and he's been to Antietam, he's been to Arawaka. These are, these are people, you know, they're, they're interested. Anything.
And I am so glad, so very, very glad that you stayed for this part of the event. I'd also like to especially recognize President Lincoln, who is in the front row. He is, of course, accompanied by Company F, and we'd like to also thank you for your diligent service today, Tom.
fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. And we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish. I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Allison McCaffrey from the First Congregational Church of Cheshire, the first church on the green, to come. Holy One, creator and giver of life, we have gathered this day in this place in a spirit of remembrance. The monument that has stood as silent witness for so many years has brought us together today. Its words, textures, its very shape so central and familiar in this town call us to remember the war that once cleaved this very idea of a united nation. <coughs> The war that drew sons and daughters far from these homes of farm and field and industry. The warring fever whose heat carried them to distant fields and forests and plains and rivers. Parts and parcels whose very soil became hollowed resting places, sheltering the evidence of life's blood drained and life's energy shattered in the brutal reality of battle's toil. We have not gathered to celebrate war, but to remember and honor those who lived its tumult sacrificially for this great cause, to remember especially those soldiers who gave their very last breath of life in devotion to the ideals of freedom and union that carried them. The words we gathered to hear today still lift us up. As they continue to ring in our ears, may we resolve to receive them, not in rehearsal for future conflict and loss, but as spur to our own resolve that the conflicts that call them forth must never happen again. With history so vividly surrounding us in this moment, and mindful that our history teaches only as we allow it to speak. We ask that you pour out your wisdom and your grace on all people, especially those who find themselves opposed on the great issues of our own day. May your wise counsel keep us as we come to the end of this day and as we depart this field. Amen. The next part of our program is the Cheshire Community Chorus.
of which I'm a member. So I'm going to give the microphone over to our choral director, Lisa. We have some small technical issues as we migrate. And we need, and we need to start coming up. And our chorus, if you all could make your way up on the stage. There are... Our first selection is a collection of Stephen Foster songs, Stephen Foster being uh, a contemporary of this time era, and I think you'll find a lot of these tunes familiar.
Uh, and we have one final piece to our program. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Thank you, everyone. See you in another 50 years. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs>